Hello everyone. Good evening. Here is Toki Nasir. We are going to start the important session and the certification related to welding named as CSWIP 3.1. Actually, we have two kinds of certification in 3.1, CSWIP 3.1 and 3.2. 3.1 is normally for the welding inspector and 3.2 we have is normally for the welding engineer for qualify if you want to become a 3.2 certified then first you have to qualify the 3.1 these are the precautionary measures <clears throat> the TWI the welding institute based from UK started this certification that is most important and recognized in all multinational companies if you want to become a CSWIP certified then you are at a perfect place at my YouTube channel, I will complete all the chapters one by one related to SUSIP. I will share the practical knowledge. I will share the videos, supporting videos, animation. And the most importantly, I will also share the question and answer. That question and answer will support you in the actual exam. Because you have to spend more than 2,200,000 rupees are more or less fifteen hundred dollar it varies base to base and country to country so i recommend you should have to watch the entire video and wait and be patient right so let's start the c sweep 3.1 as you know for c sweep we have normally 24 chapters first one is typical duties of welding inspectors what is the main purpose of welding inspector? How he has to do what he has to done? The second thing is terms and definitions. This is the most important chapter and the base of CSWIP. If you learn properly of all these terms and the definitions which are normally used in the entire book, then you easily understand the chapter and the book. Right. Third one is welding imperfection and materials this is the most important chapter i strongly recommend you don't miss any minute of my video that will be upcoming video because almost 40 percent paper come from this chapter and this is the soul of c -SWIP. i can guarantee you if you properly understand this chapter then you can easily get 40 percent of the total marks in this chapter, we have cracks, cavities, solid inclusions, lack of infusion and penetration, etc. These are all the imperfections which could be occur in the welding. We will discuss one by one. The next thing is DT. Now, consider the sequence. What the welding inspector need to do? The definitions, imperfections. The fourth thing is whatever we did the DT, uh, uh, whatever we did the part of welding, after welding then we need to get the test two kinds of test destructive test destructive test in this test we have different types which we will break the structure break the weld items for testing purpose like hardness test impact test toughness test etc then we will go for the non-destructive test known as NDT in this test we will not break the structure but we will only use the different techniques like ut ultrasonic testing pt penetrant testing vt visual testing magnetic testing mt etc rt radiographic testing these are all the major techniques which normally considered to get the defects if any in the weld metal then we have the wps and welder qualification test this is also important chapter but for exam point of view it contains only five to seven percent but you have to consider one one point as well don't neglect anything WPS welding procedure specifications for perform the welding which parameters we have to consider in this WPS we will discuss all the precautionary measures and the consideration which we need to get before welding and after welding after that welder qualification okay we have decided the WPS now this qualified WPS will be implemented on the WQT welder qualification test because without uh, the implication of the WPS WQT will not be fulfilled so 
every welder should also be able to understand the WPS main terms and conditions. The next thing which we will uh, understand material inspection. Okay, whatever we have welded, now we get want to get the test results and the material like toughness, like its hardness, traceability, material and material condition, etc. All the things we need to understand as well. The eighth one is codes and standards, right? Whatever we are doing, these are the based on any studies. We have normally two kinds of code, AWS, American Welding Society. The second one is CSWIP. Uh, we have a uh, Dutch code, Dutch international norms normally you can see, which is based on the uh, British and you know, Dutch codes, British code normally based on the CSWIP. Most of the codes will be related to this, but we need to focus on both because company to company, the client and the contractor vary. Either it's based from the America or from UK because all the codes if we will be familiar then we can easily understand the drawings and the implication of the work okay the ninth thing is welding symbols welding symbol is also one of the best chapter and you want to understand without welding symbol you are unable to understand the drawing what the drawing is being shown and how you have to study the drawing and implement in the ground so welding symbol, different welding symbol, I will show you in that video. The next we will cover introduction to welding process, right? Now all these things have, we have briefly discussed. We have welding process, which welding we need to weld on the weld metal. Because uh, different kind of welding, this is according to the situation, according to the uh, plate, according to the procedure according to the client requirement, NDT, NDT testing, etc. First, we have <coughs> manual metal arc welding that's known as normally MMA. M M A. You will definitely uh, see this name again and again. So remember this, the abbreviation of MMA is manual metal arc welding. Then we have small SMAW shield metal arc welding then we have TIG tungsten arc welding sorry MMA and SMA are common name for both have the same principle then we have TIG tungsten inert gas in this gas in this we will use the tungsten electrode and inert gas which will be used for the shielding purpose on the uh, weld pool so what is inert gas actually during gas uh, and during welding if we are doing the welding so here we have the environmental oxidation factors like oxygen can be entrapped the welding which will cause the oxidation. Oxidation will be weaker our welding and lack of fusion as well. So we have to protect this. For protection we need some gases. Here we use the inner gas. In inner gas we normally use the argon, CO2, helium etc. We will briefly describe. Then we have MIG and MAG welding. This is also uh, related to tungsten, but here we have metal inert gas and metal arc welding. We will also describe, but in, in this welding, we have continuous electrode, but here we have uh, the consumable filler metal with the hand. Here we have continuous. The second thing is we have non consumable electrode. Then we have saw, submerged arc welding. Then we have thermal cutting. The plate which we want to perform the fabrication, first we have to cut. For cutting, we have different options, plasma cutting, thermal cutting, etc. in the pieces and the requirements according to our size, right? Then we have welding consumables. Which consumable we need to uh, utilize like gases, like electrodes, like plates, etc. Plates actually not the consumable. Uh, but the consumable normally which considered and utilized during the welding, we have to think about them. Then the, this chapter is also most important after the third chapter. Weld ability of the, you can see, weld ability of the steel. What's the meaning of weld ability? Weld ability is actually to ease the welding, how the material you have easy welding and how we can easily weld means machining 
resistance to welding etc in this weldability we will add different things somehow nickel chromium alloys to make the best weldability i will show you in the chapter as well then we have the welding repairs which kind of repairs are expected and how we can rectify those repairs in this chapter residual stresses and distortions during the welding we have somehow remains the stresses after even the solidifications so we need to identify those residual stresses which normally be in the part of the weld metal and in the permanent so with the passage of time these will uh, weaker the part and which is not good for the uh, reliability of the welder so residual stress and distortions means uh, from the original size it makes the variation and elongation etc this is distortion we will also studies then we have heat treatment process in the heat treatment we have two types of heat preheating and post heating before welding we have to heat up and post heating with post welding we have to heat up post welding heat treatment and pre welding heat treatment then we have arc welding safety safety parameters which we have to consider the proper gloves glasses and uh, safety shoes goggles etc and then we have the calibration the things which we are utilizing like uh, weld plant or uh, gauges or electrode everything should be calibrated it's not means that if the weld machine is showing 400 volts but the actual volts are 300 it means that our machine ability is not good so every material machine and the gauges which we are using for the work should be calibrated properly then we have application and control preheating what is the preheating principle and how we have to control it during the welding then lastly we have the gauges which gauges we will use for the measurement of the welding on the basis of gauges on the basis of measurement we will accept or reject the weld metal although other parts we have also which makes the rejection but gauges are also important right at the moment i am going to start from the chapter 2 